Hey guys, it's Mrs. Dryeski. Today we are going to conclude our lesson series on uh, the Taylor and McLaurin series. Um, and we're going to talk about using these series as compositions of functions. So um, if you recall way, way back when you were first taking Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, um, we learned about compositions of functions, f of g of x, g of f of x, fog and Goff notation. And um, essentially what these things were, were functions that were within another function. Um, and so we're going to see how we can use McLaurin series in these compositions. So up until this point, we've worked with a couple of um, pretty much common McLaurin series. So um, e to the x power was this series, and of course it continues on. We had ln 1 plus x, and that continued on. Sine of x, cosine of x, and um, inverse tangent of x, or arctan of x. Um, and so these are the uh, McLaurin series for these common um, common functions. Um, and so we can actually use these series for many, many, many compositions of functions. So hopefully you'll find this to be enjoyable. I know I kind of like it. So here we go. Example number one. Um, we are going to use the McLaurin series for the sine of x and the McLaurin series for e to the x power to find a new series expansion for e to the sine of x. So you see how this is a composition of function where um, we have the sine of x that's been placed into the x that's in the e to the x power function. So this is a composition. Um, we've got both. So we're going to show as far as the term containing x to the fourth power because obviously these are infinite series. We can go on forever and ever and I definitely don't want you to do that. So we're just going to restrict ourselves down so that we're working um, to the term that has the x to the fourth power in it. So um, you're not writing for the rest of your life trying to solve this problem. So when we see e to the power of the sine of x, what that's really saying to us is e to the sine of x is e to the power of the whole sine series. Yeah, the whole thing, all of it. So, of course, we're not going to write the whole darn thing. We just want to go to uh, the term that contains the x to the fourth power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the sine of x with its McLaurin series approximation. So that's over here. I've just got it posted up for us. Uh, so that's going to be e to the power of, well, let's see, that'll be um, sine of x is x minus x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial, then it's going to subtract, it'll be x to the 7th divided by 7 factorial. And we're going to go on and on and on and on. Of course, we don't really need to because this problem is actually only asking us to go to the x to the 4th power. So I really only need to write down these first two terms because after that I'm past the x to the 4th power term and I don't really need that any longer. Okay, so um, let's just use this um, x minus x to the third power uh, divided by 3 factorial. Now, using exponent rules, I can actually simplify this. So let me tidy it up a bit. Um, e to the x minus x cubed divided by 3 factorial power is really e to the x times e to the power of negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial. And this is from our exponent rules, right? Like when we have um, two bases that have different powers, but we're multiplying them together, so they have the same base but different powers, or they could be the same, I guess, um, you can add these exponents together. And that's what's happened up here. So we're just going backwards. So this is from the exponent rules. Okay, just like a little remember. Remember, if you have x to the second power times x to the fourth power, we get x to the sixth power. I'm just kind of going backwards here. Here we've got x to the sixth power, and I'm breaking it up so that I've got x to the second power times x to the fourth power. Or rather, in this case, uh, e to the x power times e to the negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial power. 
remember. Okay, so uh, just using exponent rules, we were able to expand this out. And this is a product, so we can actually multiply these two series together. So let's talk about these two series and what they actually are. I'm going to start with e to the x power. Now we know e to the x power is really 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x to the fourth power divided by four factorial. And this is gonna go on and on forever. If you don't actually have that memorized off the top of your head, that's cool. I actually provided it up here for you too, so you just like, like look back at it and check it out. And that's in the formula packet, so it's not really something you have to have memorized. Um, I'm just taking this to the x to the fourth power term. for obvious reasons, right? Now, um, let's talk about e to the power of negative x cubed divided by three factorial. That's a little bit more complicated. I'll do this one in a dark gray, why not? So let's take this expansion, e to the negative x cubed divided by three factorial. Well, we're gonna actually use the same pattern here. This is going to be one plus x, but in this case our x, what's in our x position, isn't really an x. It's negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial. Okay, my next term would be x squared divided by 2 factorial, but what I have in my x position isn't an x. It's negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial. So we're going to have negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial squared divided by 2 factorial. And this is going to continue on and on and on forever. But remember, we are only going to take this to the x to the fourth power term. And as soon as I square this, so negative x cubed squared is going to be um, positive x to the sixth power. Um, that's going to be way too large. So I actually don't even need that. I just wanted to show you that it existed. Um, but we're only going to use these two terms because this term right here is uh, has an x degree that is higher than 4. So uh, too big. We don't need that. All right. So I've got my two terms, I've got, um, or my two um, factors really. I've got e to the x, which is this crazy series, and I've got e to the negative x cubed divided by three factorial, which is this crazy series. And we are going to multiply these together because this is a product. So we're gonna take these two series and we're simply going to multiply them together. I know you're probably laughing at me. Uh, simply, Mrs. Ryaski, this is crazy. A series times a series? Oh yeah, it's gonna get crazy. Here we go. So I've got one plus x plus x squared divided by two factorial plus x cubed divided by three factorial plus x to the fourth power divided by four factorial and so on and so forth, even though we're not gonna use the rest because they're too big. And we are going to multiply that by this series, which is 1 plus negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus dot 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 even though we're not going to write the rest because it's too big. Now what we've got to do is expand this out using the distributive property. That's right, our good old friend, the distributive property. Uh, it's everywhere you want to be. I love the distributive property.
You think you're going to be done with it when you're done with Algebra 1, but it just keeps coming back over and over and over again. It's everywhere. So here we go. We are going to do this multiplication. So it starts off pretty easy. 1 times 1. Yep, that's 1. 1 times, let's multiply it by the next term in this um, expansion. So that's going to be 1 times negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial. Well, that'll be negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial. That's okay. Now, we could continue multiplying this 1 all the way through, but we would get terms that are too big because they're going to be more than the x to the fourth power term. We're not going to use that in this problem. So go ahead and ignore that, and we're going to move on and start distributing x. So we've got x times 1, which is x. And we have x times negative x cubed divided by 3 factorial. So a positive x times a negative x cubed is going to be negative x to the fourth, and it will still be divided by 3 factorial. Okay. And I could continue multiplying this x to the rest of the series. And again, they're too big because we're going to go over x to the fourth, so it's not necessary. Here we go. Now we're going to multiply this guy x squared divided by 2 factorial times 1. Oh, that's nice. That's just going to be x squared divided by 2 factorial. Beautiful. And when we multiply x squared times 2 factorial, I'm going to get negative x to the fifth divided by 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Now we know this is going to be too large, so you may choose to write it down or not. I'm just writing it down so you can see it, but I am going to ignore it later on because it's too large. We're only supposed to go to the x to the fourth power term. Um, now I'm going to move on to my x cubed term. So x cubed divided by 3 factorial times 1. That's going to give me x cubed divided by 3 factorial. And x cubed times negative x cubed is going to give me negative x to the 6 divided by 3 factorial, 3 factorial. Again, this is too large for us to consider in this problem. However, I'm just writing it down. We're going to um, disconsider it, unconsider it, ignore it later. Here we go. Finally, I've got this x to the 4th power divided by 4 factorial term. We're going to multiply it by 1. and then multiply it by this negative here. So this is going to give me negative x to the seventh divided by four factorial, three factorial. And this multiplication is going to go on and on and on forever too. Um, so I'm going to put my plus dot 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 in my work to show that I understand that I should have been multiplying forever, infinitely, it's like multiple distributive properties. Um, but we didn't because of the restrictions within this problem. So right away, uh, I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to ignore anything that is um, larger than x to the fourth. So we are going to get rid of these. Those ones are um, too big. Because we're only doing this estimation to the fourth degree. Next. I'm um, going to simplify what I can, and um, there's a lot to simplify here, so um, check it out. Um, I do have an x cubed term. It's right over here, and notice that the signs are opposite, but everything else is the same. Those guys make zero, so I can cancel those out. Yes! And you might think, all right, we've got x to the fourths, and they'll cancel out too because they have opposite signs. And you're so close to being right, except your denominators are not the same. So unfortunately, you can't just cancel those out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reorder this up a bit. Uh, 1 plus x, there's no other x's to the first powers, great, plus x squared. divided by 2 factorial. And then there's no other x cubed, so I've got minus x to the fourth divided by 3 factorial and plus x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial. And this would have been going on forever and ever too. So let's simplify it a bit more, just a bit, so that I don't have two terms that are x to the fourth, but rather we can expand it out. Now, 3 factorial is really 6, right? Because it's 3 times 2 times 1. So that's 6. Actually, let's just delete it. And we'll write 6. 
and four factorial, well, that's four times three times two. Oh my goodness. I have done myself a mischief. Okay, so there's my six. And four times three times two is 24. Nice. Okay, oh, that looks like 29. I hate it when the pen does that sometimes. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna have to get a common denominator. So um, a good denominator for six and 24 is probably 24. So I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom of this guy by four so that I can get a common denominator. This is gonna give me negative four x to the fourth, and this is a positive one x to the fourth. So altogether, that's gonna give me a negative three x to the fourth divided by 24. And that can be reduced. So this is going to reduce down to negative 1 8th x to the 4th. All right, let's put it all together now. So um, this is approximately 1 plus x plus x squared divided by, well, 2 factorial is 2, minus x to the 4th divided by 8. So this is um, a series expansion for e to the power of the sine of x brought forth to the x to the fourth power term. Final answer. I guess I like these because we get to do a lot of algebra in them. And I miss doing the algebra sometimes. Here we go, example number two. Make sure you got some paper for this one because it's a doozy. So we're asked to find the Maclaurin series up to the term containing x cubed for ln x of um, the quotient, the square root of 1 plus 2x, all divided by 2 minus 3x. And if that's not enough, then you got to find out for which, um, like the interval of um, validity, right? So where is this actually valid? So let's go ahead and try and figure this out. Um, luckily, we do know that we've got um, a series for the natural log of 1 plus x. So kind of like my plan here is to try and get things into this form as much as I can so that I can use this Maclaurin series. Right now, it doesn't look like that very much, but wait till you see what we do here. It's a beautiful thing. Check it out. So um, we're only going to go up to the x cubed term on this guy, so just be aware. When I see a natural log, you know, of course, I think of the natural base. And those of you that know me know that I'm looking for times that I can exponentiate because I really love to exponentiate. I don't know if we're going to get to do that in this problem, but I'm looking forward to it if we can. Um, when I see the uh, fraction here, it makes me think of the quotient rule for logs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this apart using the quotient rule for logs. So um, that rule says if you've got the natural log of a numerator divided by a denominator, you can break it apart using subtraction. So we'll have the natural log of the square root of 1 plus 2x minus the natural log of 2 minus 3x. Okay, so you can do that. I um, mean, it can go backwards and forwards. This is just our quotient rule for logs. All right, and then I see that I've got this square root. Well, if you recall, square roots are simply powers to um, the fraction 1 half. So we can rewrite this. I've got the natural log of 1 plus 2x to the power of 1 half. And um, remember, I'm trying to get it into this format, the natural log of 1 plus x, right? And here I've got 2 minus 3x. Well, let's see. Uh, I can easily make it a plus sign by writing it like this, right? Hopefully you guys see that. Uh, so we're getting there. So mostly what I did here is I just did, oops, the power rule. Okay, okay. 
And um, I don't have something raised to a power here, so maybe I should move this power to the front using the power rule. And you can do this with logs. So I'm going to apply the power rule. And this is actually kind of nice because I've got something one plus something. And this is one plus something. So we're getting into this form here. This is not so great. I don't have a one here, but I can make a one here. I can factor that two out. So if I factor that two out, then what I'll have is one plus. Now, this isn't really divisible by two, but if I factor a two out, what will be left will be negative three X divided by two. If we think about what it means to factor, let's make sure I have all my parentheses here that I need. Good gravy. Okay, so this was, um, uh, again, with the power rule and uh, factoring. Um, if I've got three uh, halves and I multiply it by two, I'll get three. So you can actually factor a two out of three. It'll just leave you with three halves. All right. Anytime you want to do uh, factor out something that doesn't look like it's factorable, you can change it to a fraction and then you can factor that number out. This looks pretty nuts. So, um, but I think that we're in a position now where um, I can write at least this guy as a product. Because you can see I've got two times the quantity, one plus a negative three halves x. So this can be split up with the um, product rule. So let's go ahead and split that up with the product rule. So I'm not really messing with this guy anymore. I've got one half ln one plus two x then I've got minus and I'm going to split this natural log up into two logs using the power rule the, uh, I'm sorry the product rule product rule says if you've got a product in your argument you can split it apart using addition so we're going to subtract the natural log of two and we're going to add the natural log of me I'm sorry one plus negative three X divided by two. That is the product rule of logs. Woo wee. All right, I'm gonna do a little distributive property here. What again? Yes, again. So, um, I've got one half times the natural log of one plus two X minus the natural log of two minus the natural log of one plus negative three X divided by two. That's just a distributive property. Okay, sweet. So there's actually um, three parts to this problem, but only two of them will we need to use McLaurin series for because ln2 is just a constant. We don't need to have a series for that. But these guys uh, on the ends, they both can have a, a series. So I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna write it in blue so it's just easy for us to see. What is um, one half times the natural log of one plus two x using our Maclaurin series for the natural log of one plus x. Now we don't have an x, we have two x, so we'll have to improvise a bit. I'm gonna have one half times what this, whatever this whole series is. So that's x minus x squared divided by two, blah, blah, blah. So I don't have x, I've got two x, so that's gonna be two x minus then it's gonna be two x squared divided by two plus two x cubed divided by three. 
and then on and on and on. But recall for this problem, please, that we are only going to the x cubed term. And after this, we are going to be more than cubed. So I don't really need to write the whole rest of them down. So let us simplify this as much as we can. And then we'll go on to this term here, which I believe I'm going to do in dark gray again. Why not? Here we go. So this is 1 half times 2x minus, now 2x squared is 4x squared, all divided by 2, and 2x cubed is 8x cubed, all divided by 3. And on and on we go. I'm going to go ahead and use the distributive property and simplify here. So 1 half times 2x is x, 1 half times negative 4x squared is uh, just a negative x squared, right? Because my 2 times 2 is 4, my 4s cancel out, that's nice. And then we have 1 half times 8x cubed divided by 3, well that's going to give me uh, 4x cubed divided by 3. And this is going to go on and on and on, what else? Okay. So I think we have simplified that piece just as much as we possibly can. I'm going to go on to um, this crazy piece here. And you know what? I'm going to bring this down just so we can still look at it because I'm going to move this down a bit as well. Okay, so we are going to simplify. I'm just going to use it as a positive and I'll subtract the result later. So I've got the natural log of 1 plus negative 3x divided by 2. And we're going to expand it out. Luckily, I do have the 1 and the plus sign. It's just where I had it at 1x. Now I've got negative 3x plus 2. But that's okay. We can still use this pattern. So my first thing that I'm going to write is my x. Well, that's this piece right here. So that's going to be negative 3x divided by 2. Then you are going to subtract. And we're going to take this value squared. So that's negative 3x divided by 2, which we squared. And then we're going to divide it by 2. So let's divide by 2 and add the next one. So that's going to be x cubed divided by 3. So we're going to take our x, which is really negative 3x divided by 2 and we're going to take it to the power of 3 and divide it by 3 and this pattern shall go on and on and on and on and on and of course you know this should be a minus sign but the plus is just telling us hey this pattern continues and simplify so i've got hmm negative 3x divided by 2 negative 3x divided by 2 squared is going to be a positive, but then I have this minus sign here, so I'll still be a negative. 3 squared is 9, x squared is x squared, 2 squared is 4, and since I'm dividing by 2, I'm going to just multiply by the reciprocal, that's 1 half. Now let's see, negative 3x to the, um, divided by 2 to the third power is still going to be negative, 3 cubed is 27, x cubed is x cubed, 2 cubed is 8, and then since we're dividing by 3, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 1 third, and the pattern will continue. We can simplify this a little bit further, and now I've got negative 3x divided by 2 minus 9x squared divided by 8 minus, let's see, 3 goes into 27 9 times, so that'll be 9x cubed divided by 8. Okay, and then the rest. Beautiful. Okay, so um, I think that's as simple as that one's going to get. So I've got my pieces, right? We figured out that 1 half times the natural log of 1 plus 2x was equal to this series at least to the x cubed term. Then we know that ln2 is a constant. We're just going to subtract that. And then we've got ln1 plus negative 3x divided by 2. 
and we wrote a series for that, at least to the x cubed term. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna put this whole darn thing together. So one half times the quantity uh, or times the ln of one plus two x is this guy here. So we're going to write that first. I've got x minus x squared plus four x cubed divided by three plus dot 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 minus ln two minus, and let's use our gray, since we used gray for this guy, um, this series, the natural log of one plus negative three x divided by two was really negative three x divided by two minus nine x squared divided by eight and minus nine x cubed divided by eight plus dot, 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 the whole rest. Now, I would suggest that you be very careful with your signs here because this minus sign was subtracting this whole entire series, not just the first term. So be careful, the distributive property will get you if you're not sure. So here I've got, um, hmm, this is gonna get distributed. So let's go ahead, let's not try and skip any steps. I've got x minus x squared plus four x cubed divided by three minus ln two. A negative times a negative is a positive three x divided by two. A negative times a negative is a positive, so that's nine x squared divided by eight. And a negative times a negative is also positive, nine x cubed divided by eight. And then we got that old dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now let's see what we can do here. Let's kind of uh, switch it up a bit. So we've got like terms kind of next to each other. All right. So since this is a lot of terms, we should definitely do that. I'll start with my x to the first power. So my first x to the first power is x. The next one is uh, 3x divided by 2. So we're going to have to add those together. Next, I'll start looking for my x squareds. I got a negative x squared, and then I've got a positive 9x squared divided by 8. Okay. My x cubes, I've got a positive 4x cubed divided by 3, and I have a positive 9x cubed divided by 8. Any uh, x to the fourth powers? I shouldn't have because we were trying to cut this off at the x cubed term. And then my constant, which was negative ln 2. Oakley doakley. So let's go ahead and get some common denominators out of these fractions up. So this guy has a denominator of 1. I can multiply it by 2 on the top and the bottom. So I got 2x plus 3x. That is 5x divided by 2. All right, let's check out these x squareds. This guy's got a denominator of one. I wanna make it a denominator of eight so I can add it with this bad boy. So I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by eight. Negative eight x squared and a positive nine x squared gives me a positive one x squared, or I'll just write x squared, all divided by eight. Keep that denominator. Okay, Whew. Now let's move on to my cubes. Okay, this was a little trickier. Um, three and eight, I can't turn three into eight, can't turn eight into three without fractions, which that'll get yucky, we don't wanna do that. Uh, so the next best thing is probably 24. So we're gonna turn this into 24, I'm gonna multiply, oops, let's get my red. Uh, three times eight, so we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by eight. And on this side, we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by three. So eight times four is 32, nine times three is 27, and 32 plus 27 is 59. So I got 59 x cubed, all divided by 24, minus ln two. And now what this is, is approximately the Maclaurin series 
up to x cubed. Fantastic. So we got the first sentence of our question done here, but then it asks us for what values of x are is the series valid? Okay, so how do we do that? Um, well, we do know that for the original Maclaurin series that the ln 1 plus x is valid from negative 1 to positive 1, not inclusive of negative 1. Let me put that in black. So the natural log of 1 plus x is valid from negative 1 to positive 1. Of course, we can't equal negative 1 because if we have a negative 1, we get a 0 in our argument. You can't take the natural log of 0. All right. Um, so if we want to find out where the natural log of 1 plus 2x is valid, What am I writing here? Then what I'm going to have to do is say, okay, well, I've got negative 1 to 2x. So 2x has to be in between um, negative 1 and positive 1. Of course, I need to get x alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I would get that I have negative one half to positive one half, inclusive of positive one half. So this is where that ln one plus two x piece is valid. So now let's go check out that third piece. That was the um, natural log. Let's do this one in blue the natural log of um, 1 plus negative 3x divided by 2. So um, this is going to be valid also between negative 1 and positive 1. But we still have to solve it for x. So I'm going to multiply by 2 everywhere, get that 2 out of the denominator. And then I'm going to have to divide by negative 3 everywhere. And don't forget, when you divide by negative 3, these inequality signs are going to flip. So we are going to end up with um, 2 thirds is greater than x which is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds, which is really weird to see because we usually like to have our smaller number on the left hand side. So I'm just gonna flip it all, move my negative 2 thirds to this side. Negative 2 thirds is smaller than or equal to x, and x is smaller than 2 thirds, positive. All right, so this is the fun part. We are gonna draw a little number line and see what the overlap is. So we know everything is gonna be in between negative one and positive one, right? We know the original um, domain of validity is in between there, so I'm writing that down. Now, one plus two x is only valid in between negative one half and um, positive one half. So let's put those guys in there. Here is negative one half. And here is positive one half. And then these guys, uh, it's in between negative two thirds and positive two thirds. So here is, um, no, this is not to scale. So it's gonna be closer here, negative two thirds and positive two thirds. Okay, so this first one, negative one half is gonna be an open circle because it's not inclusive. So we're gonna open circle that guy and um, positive one halves is going to be a filled in circle because it is inclusive. So we have just restricted down our domain of validity to be in between negative one half and positive one half um, 
inclusive of positive one half. But let's just see what's up with this negative two thirds and positive two thirds. At negative two thirds, we are inclusive, but notice how it's outside of our domain of validity for our other piece here. It has to be this, the results have to be valid for every single piece. So it's, it's gonna be in between negative one and positive one, unless we have to restrict it down further. And we do have to restrict it down further because for this bottom one, the natural log of one plus negative three X divided by two, it's only gonna converge in between negative two thirds and positive two thirds. But we have to restrict it down even more because to have the natural log, the piece of the, the natural log of one plus two X, it will only converge on an even smaller interval. And that is in between negative one half and positive one half. Therefore, the domain of, in, of validity has to be in between negative one half and positive one half, inclusive of positive one half. I use the inequality symbol without the equal sign um, because this is an open circle, it's not included. And then I use the equal sign because this filled in is included. You could also write it like um, this. Ooh, it's got a, a radius um, of uh, convergence of only one half. Um, you could, if you're in AP Calc, you could also write it like this. So, depends on what class that you're in, but then we're done. Yay! I told you this one took a lot of paper. Sorry about that. The other two examples are going to be really quick, so hopefully you have a minute. We'll finish these up. Here we go. So um, as we said before, representing a Taylor McLaurin series is um, useful when you're trying to integrate a function that's otherwise pretty difficult to do, or when we are looking for limits in the form zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity, essentially these indeterminate forms. Um, so for example number three, they want us to write this as a power series and then to leave our answer in the sigma form of the function. So um, well, you might need to go back and look through your notes for additional examples, um, but of putting it into sigma form. It's been a little bit since we did that. Here we go. So, since, oops, get out of here, you. There we go. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Since the sine of x is equal to The sum from zero to infinity of negative one to the k power times x to the two k plus one power, all divided by two k plus one factorial for all x existing on the set of reals. We did this back when we were first learning about um, writing the Maclaurin series. Um, then the sine of x squared is just going to basically have an x squared everywhere we had an x, which was only in one place. And we can simplify this out. Since it's a k squared raised to a power, we can just multiply through. It's a little bit like the distributive property. So we'll have x to the power of four. Oh, good gravy. I said four k plus two 
all divided by the quantity 2k plus 1 factorial. And this is for all x existing on the set of reals, every real value of x. But of course, we're not just trying to find what the sine of x squared is. No, no, we're trying to find the antiderivative, the integral. So we're going to have to use our rules for that. So if we know what the sine of x squared is written in sigma form, then pretty easy for us to calculate the antiderivative in sigma form. Oops, don't forget your square. I'm just going to take the antiderivative. And you might be thinking, oh, Mrs. Trieski, you, air quotes, just take the derivative of this thing? Well, yes. This is just a power rule kind of integral. Remember, it's a power series. So the power series, we're going to take the antiderivative using the power rule. Sometimes even when it looks crazy, it's really not that hard. So to take the power rule, um, we are going to, well, first I'm going to move my integral. I'm going to kind of switch this order here. I'm going to move my integral to the inside um, because that is one of our rules we can do. Back when we are taking the derivative, or I'm sorry, the um, antiderivative of sums. Sometimes I wish I could just snap my fingers and have the writing already written. Don't you guys feel like that sometimes? My word. Okay, so taking the integral, again, not so bad. Using the power rule, we just add one to your exponent and uh, we then divide by what the new uh, exponent is gonna be. So that would be uh, 4k plus three. So put it all together, I'm going to have the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k power times x to the 4k plus 3 power, all divided by 4k plus 3 times 2k plus 1 factorial. And we're done. <laughs> okay, it is a little bit crazy looking, but I'm actually pretty glad that they wanted us to leave it in sigma notation so we don't have to go further. And away we go. Last one. This is the last of our problems with Taylor and McLaurin series. Um, and then we're going to move on to some differential equations slope fields and Euler's number. It's going to be great. So um, using the Maclaurin series for the cosine of x, we're supposed to evaluate the limit as x approaches zero of the function. Whoa. Okay. So uh, just as a little bit of a reminder, cosine is really um, 1 minus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x to the fourth power divided by 4 factorial, blah, 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 blah. And I do see cosine up here. So let's see what's up. Hmm. Since cosine of x is equal to 1 minus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial minus dot 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 or plus dot dot dot, whatever you like, then what we have here for the cosine of x minus 1 plus x squared divided by 2, all divided by x to the fourth. We're going to have, let's expand out cosine, that is really 1 minus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial minus x to the sixth divided by 6 factorial plus dot 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 
So that's the whole cosine thing. I'm just using the, the Maclaurin series for that. And then we're going to subtract one and add x squared divided by two. But don't forget this whole darn thing is getting divided by x to the fourth. Wowzes. Now this isn't terrible, we've seen worse because one minus one is zero and negative x squared divided by two factorial and x squared divided by two are the same. So those are also zero. And so I'm just gonna have the whole rest of the series besides those first two terms being divided by x to the fourth. So let's write that down, what we have now. x to the fourth divided by four factorial minus x to the sixth divided by six factorial. We can expand it out a little bit further, right? Just so we've got more numbers to work with. That'll be fun. And Now, I really do not enjoy writing this dividing by x to the fourth. In fact, I have noticed on your test that sometimes you guys don't enjoy it so much you stop writing it down. Uh, so probably your best bet is to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of x to the fourth is one over x to the fourth. That's going to get us this whole separate denominator out of our way. And yeah, it's going to change our, um, our fractions a bit, but it's actually pretty nice to do. So, um, okay, remember, we're, this is all still equivalent to what we're about to write down. Okay, so I've got x to the fourth power divided by four factorial times one divided by x to the fourth. Mm-hmm. God, my pen keeps on making my fours look like nines. I promise I am definitely writing fours. Minus x to the sixth divided by six factorial times one over x to the fourth plus x to the eighth divided by eight factorial times one over x to the fourth. Oh my goodness me. And then this pattern of multiplying what comes next by one over x to the fourth is gonna continue. So that's why I write my plus dot, dot, dot. This is all gonna simplify out pretty neatly. X to the fourth divided by x to the fourth is one. So I've just got one divided by four factorial minus x to the sixth divided by x to the fourth is just x squared. So I'll have x squared divided by six factorial Then um, x to the eighth divided by x to the fourth is x to the fourth. So I'll have x to the fourth divided by eight factorial. And this pattern's gonna continue on and on and on. And that's fantastic. But this question does not ask me just to rewrite the Maclaurin series uh, for this cosine um, fraction thingy. It's asking us to evaluate the limit. So let's find it. The limit as x approaches 0 of the cosine of x minus 1 plus x squared divided by 2 all divided by x to the fourth is going to equal the limit as x approaches infinity of this weird, I'm sorry, as x approaches 0 of this whole crazy series that we just found. So that's going to be 1 divided by 4 factorial minus x squared divided by 6 factorial plus x to the fourth, oh my goodness, divided by 8 factorial and on and on and on. Now the cool thing is, is that since we're taking the limit as x approaches 0, 0 divided by anything is 0, and this pattern is going to continue. So this is going to keep going to 0, the next term is going to go to 0, the next term is going to go to 0 we are eventually going to get something that's just 1 divided by 4 factorial. By the way, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 1 24th. So the Maclaurin series for the cosine of x, um, using that to calculate the limit as x approaches 0, 
is about 1 24th. That is, to me, a satisfying answer. All right, my darlings, that's what I have for you. So uh, please make sure that if you're working out of the textbook, these are the problems that you're going to use. And if you're using Math Excel for school, please make sure that you are my lab and mastering that you are going to do homework number 10. I hope you guys are doing phenomenal and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.